So welcome uh, everyone to today's Midday Encounter with the Lord, to those of you in the chapel and to those of you at home. Uh, on your sheet and on the screen, uh, hopefully you have a, a piece of paper, um, do take that uh, with you as you leave. Uh, we're going to open with a, a song, we can't sing but we'll hum, but uh, the song is This Is My Desire, and I'm sure that's why you've come, I'm sure to have some coffee, to have some refreshments, but in some way to meet with the Lord, isn't it? This is my desire, to honour you, to come to you. And so let's just, uh, Stephen plays the music, if you'd like to, to hum the tune or meditate on the words. This is my desire. Let's uh, bring our hearts, bring our lives, bring everything that we have to the Lord and uh, to worship him. Lord, just as we come to you this morning, we ask your blessing on our moments together. May we meet with you, may we encounter you. Our hearts yearn for you. This is our desire, to meet with you, to honour you, to be found by you. Bless our time together. Come Holy Spirit amongst us. Make Jesus real and present. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Stephen. Lord, we worship you. We worship you. With all that we know of ourselves and with all that we don't know of ourselves, we worship you. All that we know of you and all that we don't know of you yet. We worship you. Mm -hmm. Amen.
I'm just going to read uh, a story from the Gospels, a few verses from the Gospels that's in your sheet for those of you in the chapel of uh, a lady that encountered the Lord. And I just trust that as we look at a, just one or two things really, that we would also encounter the Lord through her. And it is the example of, in the episode of Mary, and this is after the resurrection of Jesus. And uh, it says this, she turned round. Who's, who is she? It's, uh, it's Mary Magdalene. We don't know too much about her, but uh, in, in Luke chapter 8 it says this was a lady from whom Jesus had uh, um, cast out seven spirits. We don't know anything more than that, what assailed her. Seven means wholeness, a, a, a completeness, a lot. So she was seriously set free. And you can just imagine just the emotional trauma, psychological and everything else. She was gloriously set free. And Luke chapter 8 says she actually joined the band of disciples with other ladies and with their means uh, provided for uh, Jesus' disciples and Jesus himself to go around preaching the good news of the kingdom. So she, she was a lady of substance and of means. But she was really set free from the Lord. And she must have truly loved him. And this is Mary uh, Magdalene. And she turns round and saw Jesus standing there. She did not realise that it was Jesus. And he asked her, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? So not only the trauma of her life beforehand, but even in this moment of of just the confusion of the, the cross and Jesus being arrested, the one who saved her and given her hope, now arrested and now, and now even killed like, like a murderer, like a criminal, and, and, and died and, and uh, coming to the grave as she did. Just There must have been so much confusion and turmoil and, and tears and maybe anger and disappointment, so much going on in her. And why are you crying? This is why she was crying. Who is it you were looking for, said Jesus. She didn't recognise him. It, perhaps in his glorious resurrected body, uh, she didn't know, she didn't realise who it was. Thinking he was the gardener, it says, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I'll get him. What a yearning in her heart. And then there's this glorious verse. And Jesus said to her, Mary. She said, he said, Mary. And she turned towards him and cried in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Just, just that little glimpse, a glimpse, I put it in um, bold. Jesus said to her, Mary. And uh, it, it's like a picture, to my mind, I just can't just have a picture. If there'd been a film being made, the film, the camera would have just zoomed in on Mary just to see her reaction. Mary and the Lord. What an encounter with the Lord Jesus, with the, with the living God, eh? Just to hear your voice, your name being called Mary. And then her eyes were opened. And she encountered the Lord in a truly wonderful way. It, and just that phrase reminds me, that you can look at just the bottom of your sheet there. Actually, funny enough, I'll explain the connection of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. It says, We are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. We are God's handiwork. It's like, it's got the element of masterpiece, like almost like a, a work of art. And when that, that picture of Mary at that point was set, what was just proclaiming that something was happening in her, she was like a work of art that God was uh, doing her, that Jesus was doing in here, in her. And uh, there's, a, there's a portrait, I asked for Stephen's wife Maggie to, to if she could uh, give me a, a portrait, there's one of a, of, a, of a young lady. But uh, I'm, there's, there's been famous portraits made throughout the, the, the century, some of them, there's Rembrandt and Vermeer, the, the Dutch uh, painters especially, were especially good at painting a portrait. But when someone does a portrait, they, they capture every feature. It's like it is a, it's a work of art. Something is, is caught. Something treasured is is is, a, is um, embodied there, and something unique about that person. And then there's a frame that goes round it, and it's almost to encapsulate it and and highlight 
And so these great museums have these wonderful frames to capture this masterpiece, this work of art. And maybe you can see where I'm getting to. <laughs> because the Lord, was what he was doing in Mary, setting her free and taking her in her confusion and turmoil, he was saying, you are a work of art. Paul, uh, the Lord says through Ephesians to each one of us, we are God's handiwork, his masterpiece, his work of art. So if you can see yourself today in this, that God looks on you and says, you are my work of art, you are my masterpiece. Can you take that on board? Can you receive that from the Lord today? For that's what the Lord says. We are God's handiwork, masterpiece. You, each one individually, are God's handiwork and masterpiece through what he's done. Yeah. Ephesians 2 verse 10. What a verse, eh? If you look at the, the, the first part of chapter 2 verse... Uh, Ephesians chapter 2 doesn't start too well. It talks about um, uh, where we've come from. It talks about, you know, verse, three verses of Ephesians 2. We're dead in our sins... We used to follow the ways of the world, we follow the ways of the world, the ruler of the king of the, the air, and we gratified our own sil sinful nature, following its desires and thoughts. It's quite a damning indictment of where the world goes and what we are like without Christ. We go our own way, we do our own thing, we follow the prince of the air, uh, and we're just disobedient, far off from God. But verse 4 in Ephesians chapter 2, there's a big but, but by his grace, by his kindness, because of God's great love, it says, God's rich mercy, he makes us alive in Christ. He does a new work. He does a new masterpiece, a new sculpture. For it is by grace we have been saved. And he raises us up and he seats us in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. So that's with new resurrection power. Something radically different has happened to us as we come to Christ and receive his mercy, his salvation. And we give him the, the, um, uh, the, uh, the welcome, to, as, as it were, to just to, to, con to do something special in us, to sculpt something wonderful in us. And that's what he encourages us to do, because he is a, he, that is his work in each of us. What he's made you, each one of you, uh, even in, in the natural, in the, in the, the gifts and the talents, that's part of his masterpiece too. But when we come to Christ, even more, by his grace and his mercy, he sculpts something wonderful and glorious. And so when Jesus looked at Mary, I kind of see that. You know, I am doing something in you, Mary. I have saved you. And it's not the end as you think. It is, in fact, just the beginning. That's what the Lord says. And so just to finish our passage in John 20, Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni. And then she obviously grabbed hold of him. She was that excited. Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the, to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and sisters and tell them I'm ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene, can imagine the heart with which she did this, went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. So now she was on a mission. She had seen the Lord. Her tears had been dried and she had something to say and do. She was God's masterpiece. Ephesians 2 verse 10, just to, to finish, we are God's handiwork, masterpiece. Is it finished there? No. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. Because we're his God's masterpiece, then he gives us, at whatever age we're at, if we've still got breath in our lives, to do something for him. And Mary went and said, I, I've got a saviour, I, I have seen the Lord, and she, she witnessed to him. So, as, we, as you've come today, uh, can there be two things, do have a coffee, do have something to eat, but meet with the Lord. Can you hear him saying, you are my masterpiece? 
Would you let that soak in? Because that's what the Bible says. That's what he did with Mary as, he, as Jesus encountered her. And that's what he wants to do with you as he encounters you. You are God's masterpiece created in Christ Jesus. Will you let that soak in? Will you spend the time on a bench somewhere? Lord, I don't understand it. Don't feel it. But that's what you say. You are sculpting something amazing. I am your masterpiece. And just relax and let him continue his work. Number one. Number two. In view of that, Ephesians 2, chapter 10, chapter, uh, chapter 2, verse 10 says, He has good works for you. Will you let him speak to you as you sit there? The Lord saying, I've got this for you to do. You can still do this for me. What about this? What about that? He will encounter you with his affirmation that you are his masterpiece. But he will speak to you saying, will you do this for me? Will you do this for me? So, let's come. Let's open our hearts, receive his favour, his mercy, his grace, his kindness, incomparable kindness, his affirmation over our lives. You are his masterpiece. So we're going to sing and just give time for a reflection. And the song is I'm a new creation. We won't sing it in a, in a fast, jolly way, which you can do, but just to let the words sink in. I am a new creation. I am God's handiwork, God's masterpiece. Let the Lord minister to you through these words. Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> And so, Lord, as just as Mary heard her name called by you as you gazed deeply into her eyes and into her soul, with such loving and loving gaze of affirmation, Lord, may we each hear that from you today. You are, we are your masterpiece. And would you speak into our hearts, Lord, what you are calling us to do, despite the restrictions of COVID. You are the Lord, and nothing can stop your kingdom advancing. 
So Lord, bless each one of us today with fresh revelations of your incredible love and the incredible work that you are doing in our lives and the incredible purposes that you still have for us. Lord, by your Spirit, fall on each one of us today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And may this day bring rest to your heart and to your home. May God's image in you be restored and your imagination in God be restored. May you know grace to embrace your own finite smallness in the arms of God's infinite greatness. May God's word feed you and his spirit lead you into the week to come and into the life to come.